Hello students, uh, this video will go over how to set up and create the first part of your digital painting using Klecky. Klecky is a free web-based digital painting program that is compatible with school Chromebooks, Macs, and PC. Um, we are using this in both of my classes, so this, this um, Video is going to just cover the opening, how to set up your documents, give you an overview of the layout, and how to place a photo into Klecky and create the outline. The first step of any piece of artwork is that you want to trace the contour lines or the outlines of your object, whether you do it, you're doing a floral pattern, a fruit pattern, or you're doing a close-up still life depending on which class you are in. Um, the key thing to remember here is that contour lines are just outlines. They don't have any shading. They don't have any color. They may suggest texture, but they only, they're just only made up of lines to suggest shape and a little bit of texture, but not most of the texture is created through shading. Uh, the shading and color are going to be explained in a couple in the next two videos. But for that, for now, let's stop where we are and get into Klecky. All right, so we are here. Uh, this is the interface for Klecky. Um, it's a much simpler interface than most of the programs you're used to using. Uh, it may have the toolbar on the left, it may have it on the right, but you can switch where you place your toolbar by using these back and forth arrows here. I'm going to zoom in my screen so that I can show you a little bit more of the features of Klecky and it be a little bit larger. Um, we will be getting into brushing and painting because that is the key thing that Klecky is good for. Klecky is great for painting. Uh, it has mainly two brush choices, soft and hard. Uh, the soft edged brush also does blending, which is going to be very useful for creating texture and shadow. Uh, but the hard edged brush is going to give you more of the look of a vector piece of artwork. And then there is a sketchy brush. Let me pick a color that stands out. There is a more of a sketch style brush, but I personally feel like this hard brush is probably fine for what we want to do. Uh, and then the softer brush kind of gives you a little bit of softness, but you can see that it starts to use overlap and blending to blend whatever was underneath it with what is on top of it. So those are kind of the two differences. More of that will be explained later. And then the other key thing is the eraser. So to jump between these tools, um, the shortcut for eraser is E, the shortcut for brush is B. So you can just jump back and forth between those two from brushing to erasing by pressing B and E. Um, you can also change the size of your eraser by using this scroll wheel, or you can use the brackets that we have been using in Photoshop and Photo P. That will also make your brushes bigger or smaller. Um, so then the other parts of this interface are the layers panel. You're going to always start with just one. It does have some blending modes and it has opacity. So you can turn opacity of individual layers up and down. Edit has some minor adjustment features and filters for photographs. Um, the bottom half is for photos. The top half is for resizing, rotating, stretching, and bending and moving. So you will use these later on. And then file. This is where you'll do things like create a new file or save your current file. No matter what, when you start, you're gonna, it's gonna give you a blank screen and it will allow you to save to your browser storage. To use this browser storage for the first time, you always want to click overwrite 
and it will tell you that wherever you are in your artwork, the current state will be saved in your browser. So this is useful. If your computer accidentally crashes, it should save to the browser and be there again the next time, as long as you keep saving to the browser. However, I would highly recommend at the end of every drawing session that you save your artwork also as a PSD to your desk clock by clicking save as PSD and clicking save. This will preserve all of the layers in case your browser doesn't save it. Um, you have a backup, so it is always important to create a backup. For your first prop for this project, we're going to be using a square document. So I'm going to create a new document that is 2000 by 2000 pixels tall and just click OK. Now, right now it's given me a brow, a window that is really large. So I need to zoom out to fit it to the screen. You can use these features to zoom. You can also use, if you have a mouse, you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And if you hold down the uh, space bar while you're zoomed in, it will allow you to move around and turn into that little hand feature. If you um, also, if you hold down the shift key, nope, nothing happens. So it's just use the scroll wheel. Um, so with that, I've got a, a new canvas. I am going to place my photo into this canvas. So different classes are doing different projects. So this project, this assignment, um, I'm going to do a floral motif. If you're doing the pattern, um, I'm going to choose a flower. Flower. You do want to choose a photograph, not a piece of artwork, not a drawing, not a cartoon. It does need to be from a photo because you are going to be needing to do some shading and texture. Uh, I'm going to choose this, this lotus flower. Actually, you know what? Let's look for a better lotus flower. Lotus flower. This one is great. So I'm going to take this lotus flower and I'm going to right click or alt click on a Chromebook and hit save image as and save it to my desktop. Um, if, you, if you don't remember where you saved it, you can also just right click and press copy image. And you can paste, but if you right click, right click doesn't work. So you do have to press control V as in Victor to place as a layer. When you place as a layer, it will allow you to put your picture in there. Um, 10th graders, if you're doing a close up artwork for your class, you want to blow this picture up so that it really fills your screen. Uh, digital art students, because you're doing a repeating pattern, uh, you kind of want to keep the whole flower in your picture and just hit OK. Uh, so that's how you would place an image. If you were not able to paste, you can also click on Import. Um, and then whenever you downloaded, here was the picture. No, that's not the picture. Here we go. And then I, let me just place the sunflower and then hit open, click as layer, and it will give me the option to place. So I, but I don't need to place this because I have a flower. So a little bit about placing images. Uh, the first thing you want to do when you place a new picture, you're going to notice that it immediately created a new layer if you did it right. If you just clicked as image, you did not create a new layer. I would like to double click and just click flower, flower pick, and then just rename, and then I'll double click on this and click background. This will just keep it, make it easier for me to manage, to move things, or if I move stuff around, I know what each layer is on. And I'm going to turn my picture layer down to like 50. For tracing. Actually, you know what? Let's do like, uh, yeah, 50 is good. 
and then so I've got a nice light picture I'm gonna create a new layer by clicking this little plus button and I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna name this outline and click rename and now whatever I brush whatever color I brush with will only be on this outline layer it will not mess up my original flower picture so again let me just uh, erase all of that and the flower picture is preserved that is a super important thing to do otherwise your outline will appear in your final artwork so to do the outline I'm going to shift to my black brush and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to make my brush pretty tiny like uh, let's do like um, three and a half is good um, and I'm going to zoom up close and I'm going to just pick a place to start and just trace the outlines if your hands are a little shaky which mine are because I had a little, two cups of coffee this morning uh, you can turn this stabilizer on if you turn it all the way up to five there's a bit of a lag between your mouse and the, where the brush touches the paper but if you get good at it you can get a nice smooth curve I like to go somewhere in the middle with like two two is easier for me and then I'm gonna just go around and slowly trace each petal and I'm not worried about getting it perfect in one pass so I can do kind of like I can do a brush stroke I can do another brush stroke if I'm gonna do more like a bunch of smaller strokes I can turn a brush a little bit and then if I mess up I can just make a smaller eraser here erase part of it go back to brush and then just pick up where I left off like over here if I wanted to erase that little section and then just brush in So then I'm going to speed up the video and meet you back here once I've done the whole entire outline. As I'm working, I'm just moving around using that, um, sorry, using the space bar and I'm brushing when I see something, when I need to brush and I'm erasing when I need to erase. Let me just finish that here and see you in a few minutes. all right so we are back um i've done most of the flower uh so again if i turn my flower picture layer off and zoom out you can see that i've kind of done most of the flower uh the one thing i did want to kind of just go over as i was working uh even if you see it, a lot of times with petals or things where there's overlap there might be let me turn my outline layer off there might be a line inside that is the edge of a petal. You want to kind of trace that. So like this edge here, this edge here, this edge of the flower actually has two edges. So you do want to, to put both of those edges into your tracing. Uh, the other thing that I kind of ignored because I wanted to demonstrate was if you have a part of your picture, a part of your object, that has a lot of little tiny textures like the inside of a flower or the inside of uh, a fruit where there's like a tons of little tiny seeds I don't need to draw each every each and every little tiny cup um, and outline each individual little spray thing what I can do making sure I'm on the right layer outline layer which I realized I was not uh, I'm going to do just kind of like a few little spikes my brush is like I have smoothing on way too strong at this point you do for this rougher textures part you want to turn your smoothing down to like one because then I'm gonna just kind of do like a few little dabs 
and use to give the illusion of texture. without spending like too long doing each and every little tiny hair. I see a little fuzz over here. So let me just do one or two little fuzzies. And now I'll put my stabilizer on and just kind of complete this edge. Kind of goes over that. So if I zoom out and turn off my picture, you can see that that just by giving the suggestion of texture with just a few lines is enough for the sake of a piece of artwork. So that is how you do step one, placing a picture and doing the contour lines of your objects. Please try to complete this step by the end of this week so that you're ready to add color and shading, which I will get into in the next two videos. That's it for me. I hope everybody's safe and well and have a great day.